believe it's corrupt. Because the, just the Bible only knows one saint. If that's the social authority here, the Bible only knows one saint, and that's any Christian. Anybody who's born from above, anybody who is a Christian in scriptures is called a saint. There's no such thing as a canonization process. There's no such thing as a beatification process. The word saint is a simple biblical term that describes Christians. Rob, could, yes. we, could I just clarify one point of yes. meaning here? Do you think Roman Catholics are Christians? No, I do not. Well, thank the you. Roman I mean, Catholic religion a... is not a Christian religion. And part of it is being... There are many people is, who would be surprised by that comment. I'm though. sure that they would. But you see, like the two people here. <laughs> well, the reason I say that is simply because of the, of the conversation we're having right here. See, the Roman Catholic religion would come along and say that the Pope can make a saint, that the Pope can beatify somebody, that the Pope can declare somebody to be in heaven. Well, the simple record of Scripture is that all those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, all those who have been born from above, yeah, are Yeah, but Roman saints. Catholics will believe that's now, them, so the, if you're going to be literal. Right, but this, this uh, fellow here has said that you must be born of the water and the spirit. And, and then he says that it does pertain to baptism. John 3, 5 does not have the word baptism. He assumes that baptism is in okay, John Okay, Father McKenzie, are you surprised that you're not a Christian? As well, it's as a little bit of a shock to us. <laughs> um, because, you know, because as I'm someone who wants to follow our Lord and wants to allow him to work uh, through me, Oh, well, then I, you I must listen to the word that he's well, given you. Absolutely, and I, I do, and I respect your emphasis on the Bible, and I, I believe uh, in the inspiration of the Bible. I think one of the problems we're just talking about here maybe is simply terminology. In, uh, our Lord said, you must be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. Right. Our Lord said, there are people who are in heaven, who hear us and know us, and, and indeed in the book of Revelations can present prayers to God. He didn't use the, maybe the exact terminology uh, what, what that, that you're looking you for in terms of saying that they are saints and we are simply baptized people that we might use in the 1990s. Precisely, but there because is, all There Christians, is a distinction between those who are in heaven. I mean, we're not in heaven, yet, go to heaven are we? Do all Christians go to heaven? The good ones do. No, no. <laughs> but, the, the, do all Christians go to heaven? It's not a matter of being good Christian, bad Christian. Do all Christians go to heaven? We don't, as Paul says, I am still running the race. I am still trying to live the pattern of the death of Christ in my life. So yes. we're not absolutely certain. Can we go back to saints anyway? Can we just go back to saints? Yeah, okay. Saints are the ones who, who we, we know, you know, that we pray that some people have made it and we know that the saints have made it. That gives us the conviction that we couldn't see, otherwise this whole have idea of making about it. members of see, our this, family. This is the Roman Catholic religion. This whole idea of making it. Because it's a merit-based system. It's a work system. If you've been good enough, if you've been holy enough, if you've tried hard enough, then you but can actually Is there a guarantee right saying, now that you're going to be in heaven whatever you do with your life? Absolutely. Whatever you do. So How if you, you did know that, right? Oh, because I have it on the promises of God in Christ. So this if you did horrific words. sin, if you Listen turned against our Lord, would you, would you still be taken to heaven? Well, Even if you... Uh, became a, a, a very unpleasant person, which I'm sure you're not yet. Oh, but if, <laughs> thank if, you if very it much. Happened, if it happened, which it could happen, could it not happen I'll to not, any of us? I'll Are not, we, I'm going to drag you back to saints. We'll, we'll not Sorry. deny that Christians sin, all right? But once we have been redeemed by a perfect redeemer, once mm. we have been born from above by God in Christ, mm. of course, the Are you just jealous God, because Roman Catholicism have so many saints? Oh, not at all. <laughs> When you come to the point that the word saint is not referring to some specialized class, do you think Mother Teresa was a very good person? She was a very good person, from what I understand. Who, who do you are, think she's who in are heaven? The people? I do not. Do you think she's in no, heaven? No, I do not. Do you think any Roman Catholic ever is in heaven? You cannot be a Christian. Well, it's hard to take you seriously the... and believe that Mother Teresa isn't in heaven. She's as good as you get, isn't she? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, she's not there. None of us but will But you see, go. salvation is not dependent upon good works. That's my whole point. That's true. If we were to base salvation on our good works, nobody would get there. Right. Nobody. It's important. Whatsoever. It's the work of our Lord Jesus. It's not, even, not part of not Peter's work. Uh, it's I mean, not my work. It's the work of our Lord Jesus. But it does have to be a part of us. It does have to it be is. brought out in our lives. It is a part And St. Paul, I think, is, is very strong. Point but hang on. Salvation. Let Andrew Brown come back and know he hasn't been in for a while. Sorry, yes. there's, there's one small point. It seems to me that the urge to look at some Christians as superior to others is found in any form of Christianity. I mean, you redefine it so that only, the peop only those you find superior are called Christians at all. No, are we no, discussing no, no, saints? saints. But, no, 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 but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to talk about saints. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to say that every form of Christianity that I know of has something which could turn into sainthood. They think there's so-and-so who is actually closer to God than I am. 
as so-and-so, who is an example to all of us as mm -hmm. to how close mm -hmm. to God we can get. Yeah. And the, 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 the Vatican system puts a bureaucracy on top of this, as yes. it puts a bureaucracy on everything else. But that, there's nothing unreasonable in that. There has to be a mechanism of decision. If you look at the way that some televangelist-type charismatic evangelicals worship their leaders, you really rather want a bureaucratic system that will say that will have a devil's advocate and all the rest of it. Andrew, okay. do you think the Church of England suffers because it doesn't make more of its saints? Um, yes, I mean the Church of England has this wonderful compromise where you can mm. venerate people as saints if you like, but you don't have to. Mm. And some of them are Roman Catholics, like Cardinal Newman, one of them C.S. Lewis, mm. um, some very Florence strange character. Nightingale. Yes, Florence Nightingale. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's. Would you consider that Florence Nightingale might have been a saint? Certainly. I yeah. see. We're back it's to that point again. Might have been a saint. Might have been a saint. Do we understand here at this table right now that what I'm saying is that all who are Christians are called saints, excluding Roman in Catholics, the Bibles. All who are Christians are called <laughs> saints Don't in the New Testament. I want to ask Father Therefore, the whole so. idea of making somebody a saint is an impossibility. It's ludicrous. You can't make somebody a saint. Do you think more people today would consider Princess Diana their modern icon, their equivalent of a saint? That's a better word, icon, but not saint. You see. Because saint is a common term reserved in the New Testament for all those who are already Christians. It is not a specialized feature. It's not an add-on. It's not something that the Pope can do or a, a magisterium or a group of cardinals somewhere. A saint and a Christian but, but, are synonymous. It's, it's not something that the Pope can do. It's not something the Church can do because it's the work of God. and It's the work of through his son, Jesus right. Christ, in someone. But what I think is an issue here is not j just about terminology, icons, or saints. Right. It's about whether when someone dies who has been close to us and who has been close oh. to Christ, doesn't that mean he who has been, you know, I've asked them to pray for me, mm -hmm. I've, and they have uh, worked for me and tried to help me to get to know Christ, doesn't that mean their influence is suddenly cut off just because they've become so close to Christ, face to face, as St. Paul, I think, would say? Doesn't that mean that no longer is there any communication, no longer is there any work for us? And what, what we want to say is, well, yes, there is, but we do need a process because Florence Nightingale we can learn from. C.S. Lewis, we can learn from the great attributes of these people. But there comes a time where, and people outside the Catholic Church learn from these people and pray to saints. There comes a time when, with authority, we need to be able to say, yes, this person is someone we can safely imitate and we can safely uh, and certainly in a, a public way, in a public way. And now well, I'll exactly. I mean, we, we all need family. We're all member and we have fellowship with each other in Christian, uh, in the Christian church. And that's important to us. We need family. We need those who support us on the way and who reflect our Lord Jesus back to now, us. Now this we is, need that. Now you, and it's an important now you human hit, need. It's not to take away from Christ. And we all know part of it would be horrified the head to hear that he was taken away from Christ. Well, you've hit the nail on the head here. The Bible says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespass according to the riches of his grace. Not to anybody else. The Bible also says it's not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood. Okay, and he well, entered a holy place. What do you do about, about stigmata and miracles? Once for all. How do you explain those way, or do you? Like, for instance, do you I, accept I a, Father Joseph's word that he saw stigmata on part of you? I have a different uh, definition of Would you mind the, answering? Not for me, though. Do you believe Father Joseph when he says he saw stigmata on part of you? Yes, I can believe that there, there are supernatural phenomenons occurring on the earth. Absolutely. What did you call it? Paranatural phenomenons that are occurring? Well, they try to excuse stigmata by saying it comes yes. from the mind, which is impossible. But my Someone point, once said to, to Padre Pio, you have the wounds of Christ because you're always looking at your crucifix. He said, listen, go out and look at a cow and see if the horns grow in your head. Because his question is, what is the source <coughs> of it all? What is the source of it all? And in interviewing... The of Christ. That's the well, of it all. in Christ. interviewing the, uh, the whole issue of, uh, of this man, Pio, this is taken from the Metagore Herald. Listen to this. So with supernatural gifts and graces, the stigmata, transverberation, mystical prayer, ecstasies, visions, Padre Pio has a specific personal vocation to be a co-redeemer, a collaborator with Jesus, to be a voluntary victim, to be a daily martyr for the atonement to the Heavenly Father for sin. That's heresy. You don't have no, that father just men. It's, you it's don't not have heresy. Men. It's, oh, it's not heresy because everyone living a Christian life 
is a co-redeemer with Christ because we are, we are in Christ who redeems us, helping ourselves and others. Wrong. So co-redeemer doesn't mean we are equal or in the place of Christ. There are no co-redeemers. What's your source? There's You're my, very definite, absolutely. perhaps arrogant, what you say. Oh, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to come across arrogant. I'm just trying to get into the zest yes. of this. What's Blessed, miraculous? Blessed be the God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. <laughs> I, I think that is an important point. Alone I mean, has accomplished redemption. Nobody can add to it. Collect yeah. human can do Okay, I, and we, that's a, a very important point, and it's there. It's in Hebrews, and we know that Christ has won the victory. It is his work right. that has done it. The yes. only thing is that it needs to be applied to me. It needs to be worked out in my life. And I can do that through my prayers, through my sufferings. It's everywhere in support. Where well, is let Andrew Brown come in for a moment. So, He's been trying to describe So, so I'm simply going to say that the, there's something struck me about this discussion, and that is that the quality of sainthood, and I have met occasional saints, I've even met Mother Teresa um, from time to time, is meant to be something direct and personal. It's meant to be a simple, overwhelming witness. People look at this person, they talk to this person, and then they think, yes, here is a window into holiness. And the discussion that we've been having has been about as far from that as it's possible to get. We're sitting here having these poisonous Reformation-type wrangles which have died away everywhere in the world except Northern Ireland, where they're still responsible, partially responsible for getting people killed, and I speak with some feeling because that's where my family came from. And how is it, how is it possible that the, this really simple human quality that saints have has been so desiccated, so tangled up in arguments of the sort that give theology a really bad name. What, what is... Because, Father Joe, uh, can you come back to that? Briefly, what, I've what, we're, got what we're talking about is that everyone must live the uh, alliance, I'm going to say it in Italian, it, one's relationship with God. If we don't live it, okay. we are not going to enter his reign. Okay. Father Joseph, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you all very much. That's all from us for today. Thank you for joining us. See you again. Bye-bye.